Hello all of you beautiful people and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here again with another match preview. This time it's Nottingham Forest versus Liverpool and it's coming up on Saturday. That's tomorrow and it's a three o'clock kickoff. So one of them awkward ones, you know, no live games shown at that time in the UK. So it's a bit of an awkward one to find on TV, but I'll find it. I'll be live. Don't you worry about it. And um, yeah, I'll be there with a live stream. I look forward to seeing you all in there. So um, as usual, I'm going to go through a match prediction. I'm going to go through a bit of news injuries wise, for instance, and then I'll go for a score prediction, how I think the game will go. And also I'll give you a lineup prediction, who I think will be on the pitch come tomorrow afternoon. Um, just before I do that, if you're enjoying the content, please leave a like on the video. Also subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. That helps me out so much. And I also thanks everybody who has already done that. And thanks everybody who tunes in, gets in the comments, chats with me and engages. Really enjoy it. And thank you so much. So let's get into it. Um, the match is, well, Forest versus Liverpool. It's, it's an awkward one. I, I read a stat um, yesterday. Apparently Liverpool have not won at the city ground since 1984, I think, or 1982. I think Ian Rush was on the pitch last time we did. That's pretty impressive. I know Forrest were away from the Premier League for a while, but they've still been back in it. They've been in it a couple of seasons anyway. It was last season they came up. So they're a bit of a bogey side for Liverpool going by that. I don't think it'll be that way this weekend. I think Liverpool will go there and I think they'll mean business. This is a chance for Liverpool to go four points clear at the top of the table as well to really put pressure on Arsenal and City. And I think we'll do it. Um, and also them records are made to be broken, aren't they, really? Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be pretty one-sided. Um, I've just looked at Forrest's previous uh, matches. And in the last nine matches, they've won two, drawn one, and lost six. Um, and no, the only thing is there's no team really been absolutely dominating. I mean, they did um, concede four against Villa um, two fixtures ago. They were pretty hard done by against United in the week, that 1-0 win for United, last-minute winner. They're a bit of a funny team. You know, they come up against teams and they perform well, but then don't get the result or... You know, they put on a performance that absolutely shocks you and they do get the result. Um, again, with Liverpool not being able to, to win there, it, it could be they could be a bit of a tricky customer, but I really just am not expecting that. I'm thinking Liverpool to walk away with it. So now what I'll do is I'll go on to my score prediction, which um, I'm going to go for that good old Liverpool score. Uh, if this would work, there we go. So that's my score line. I've gone for a 3-1. To Liverpool and yeah four points ahead um, going into you know into the likes of City's fixture and Arsenal I don't even actually think Arsenal are playing this weekend I think they play midweek so I'll keep the pressure on them bit of bit of mental pressure on them you know come and get us sort of thing which is exactly what we need to do we just need to keep them keep them away from us and the only way by doing that is by going up and yeah long may it continue um, now I'll go through a lineup prediction. So um, just before I do that, there's, there is a bit of news injury-wise. Um, I'm glad I actually left this video a little bit later. As you can see, it's about half past one. And as I was getting ready to make this video, some news came in saying that Salah is definitely not going to be ready to play this game. So I'm well. I didn't have him in my predicted lineup anyway. But I'm I'm glad this, I'm glad I left it that little bit later because there was just a little bit of news trickle through over the last few minutes. So Salah's definitely not ready. So Bosley is in contention. Nunez is in contention. Um, Endo is also in contention. Gravenberg is not as serious as we thought, but he's not in contention for this game. He possibly for the next one. Um, and then the rest are all long-term, um, like Trent, Allison. Um, Oh, who else is there? Well, Jota's two months. Trent and Allison are back after the international break, so they're going to miss the game against City, the game against United in the quarter uh, quarter final of the FA Cup, and I I think it's Brighton is the, the fixture that they'll be back for. I think it's at the very end of March. Um, so that's the way that is. Jota again, long term, so that's two months. Matip, 
then by Chetich Thiago end of the season. Um, we'll well we'll see when they get back. Um, but Matip's definitely till the end of the season. And yeah, and Thiago as well is the end of the season. I, I read that as well the other day. Thiago was probably played his last game for Liverpool. Um, yeah, so with that in mind, I made a lineup prediction, of course, and here it is. Oh, wrong button. Oh, come on, where are you? There you are. So, this is my lineup prediction. Keller in goal, of course, Allison's out, but such a worthy number two. Honestly, the, the saves he pulled off against Southampton in the week, I'm surprised we came away with a clean sheet in that game. So, so surprised. But long may it continue. He's been absolutely outstanding, delighted with his performances. And um, yeah, so then into defence. As you can see, we're, we're looking a little bit stronger now. There is people coming back. So Robertson at left back, um, Connor Bradley at right back. Again, Connor Bradley's been outstanding since having to step in for Trent. And do you know, probably gets the, for me, he probably gets the place over Trent. Um, if Trent comes back into the team, I think I'd be putting him into midfield. Bradley's just, he does it all just a little bit better than Trent. Um, then in the centre-back pairing, I've gone with Van Dijk and Canate, and that's probably because they both played 45 minutes against Southampton. That was obviously, Klopp preempted that. Virgil for the first 45, Canate for the second 45. Get them a bit of football, but also a bit of rest. That means they'll both be ready to go in against Forest this weekend. Um, then into midfield, Endo. Um, that knock he got against Chelsea. Um, well, I'm not even sure it was a knock. Apparently he was in a boot. But I'm, I'm not sure when the injury occurred. But it left him out against Southampton. But I think that was just a precautionary thing. I think it was more fatigue than anything. So I think he's going to be back. And he'll be back in the base of that midfield in the defensive role where he's been an absolute, he's been an absolute machine. He's been an absolute machine, and fair play to him. Fair play to him. Um, then I've gone with McAllister and Elliot to finish off the midfield. <clears throat> um, yeah, because they're the strongest there, and why not? It's not the FA Cup. We don't need to play the youngsters. If they're there, they're fit. We need to go and win this, especially against the, the team we can't win against. Um, so, why not um, go as full strength as you possibly can? Then, up, up top, I was a little bit, as you can see, I've gone with Nunes on the left. The news I heard is that he's in contention, but he might, might you know, he might, he might not. So, I've put him in on the left. Um, I was hoping Salah would be ready so Salah could go in there because Gakpo needs to be dropped. That was an absolute shocking performance. He was one of the only senior players on the pitch against Southampton, and he was poor. Absolutely dreadful. Nothing he'd done was right. I don't know if he needs a little bit of time on the bench or what, but he needs to seriously just cop on because that was absolutely poor. When you've got 17, 18, 19-year-olds making you look bad, you, there's, there's something wrong. Considering he was one of the, the senior players... It was one of them games where you think, go on, step up, get your goal, maybe get two. And it, it took Jaden Dans to come on, 18-year-old, and score two goals to finish the game off for us. Some of Gakpo should have had done in the first half. But, yeah, wasted plenty of opportunities. So I did want to drop him. But with the news about Salah, obviously, Salah's not available. So Gakpo goes in through the middle. And then I'll go on with Diaz out on the right. Um, I think that's probably the most suitable way, especially with Gakpo playing. Um, and I also think with Diaz and Nunes, Gakpo will probably shine a bit more. Um, I kind of think he felt like he was doing it all on, um, against Southampton because he had the youngsters around him. But I just think now, with a bit more experience around him, he can turn it on. Because we know he gets goals. But he can also throw out a stink of a performance like he did against Southampton. So, obviously, Salah would be my first choice, but Gakpo's there. And, well, hopefully he can hopefully he can have me cheering instead of cursing him um, this week or this game. 
So that is my lineup prediction. Lineup prediction in full is Kelleher, Robertson, Van Dyke, Canate, Bradley, Endo, McAllister, Elliott, Nunez, Gakpo, and Diaz. And again, guys, that is tomorrow. That's Saturday, the 2nd of March. That's a 3 o'clock kickoff. I will be live. I'll be live just a little bit before the game, you know, 15, 20 minutes maybe or so. And, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in there. Again, if you haven't already, leave a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel, the Slack and Armchair supporters. Really appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, who's already done that. And I shall see you in the stream. Until then, up the fucking Reds.